Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. I am super excited to continue our new mini-series on moisture and temperature effects on webs and rolls. In this clip, we will discuss the effects on test properties, which in turn affects the runability of both webs and winders. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Increasing moisture or temperature tends to increase some test values and decrease others. For example, increases of moisture or temperature tends to increase fracture toughness, stretch, and tear test values. Conversely, increases of moisture or temperature tends to decrease modulus, stiffness, and strength test values. If you were paying really, really close attention to the last slide, you should have noticed what might appear like an unexpected result. That is, increasing moisture increases toughness while decreasing strength. That is, increasing temperature increases toughness while decreasing strength. How can that be? Simple. Toughness is not equal to and is not the same thing as strength, and it never has been. In technical terms, toughness is the area under the stress strain curve, while strength is the peak of the stress strain curve. In layman's terms, toughness is the strength in the real world, while strength is the, well, strength in the test lab. Review the references for toughness testing to see how this differs from strength testing. The important thing to note here is, is that the d difference is not at all merely academic. It has very, very significant real-world implications for runability and how we design machines and processes. To begin our explanation, let us return to the more familiar concept, that is of test lab strength. The blue curve shows the strength the paper is a function of moisture content as paper goes from the press section of the paper machine, shown in the rightmost data points, at say 60 to 80% water, to equilibrium with a normal room, say 6 to 8% water. Note how the strength increases with decreasing moisture. Look closer. You will note that the y-axis of the strength is a logarithmic scale, meaning that the effects on strength are enormous, even for tiny changes in moisture. Now, let us look at the temperature effects on film or polymer strength. Note again, that strength increases enormously with decreasing temperature as again we have a logarithmic axis. Orders of magnitude greater strength at room conditions than say at the glass transition temperature which is the knee of the strength versus temperature curve. In summary, increasing moisture and increasing temperature just a tiny bit can cause enormously large decreases in strength. One of the landmarks of web break studies was from Seth and Page in the early 1980s. What they found quite unexpectedly is that paper web breaks increased noticeably in the winter months. Intuitively, this at first doesn't make much sense because paper is drier in the winter and, as we saw in the last slide, is stronger. So why does this supposedly stronger paper break more? That is because strength is a test lab property. Much more important is toughness.
which is the real world strength. Paper is more brittle and consequently less tough when it is dry. This knowledge changed the printing industry in many ways. Paper mills and printers alike started to think about specifying and controlling environmental moisture as well as the paper moisture. If they could not afford that, the printing pressman would sometimes lightly spray the edges of the wound rolls and let them sit for a few minutes before they were run. Why? Well, first, most web breaks start on the edges, so all you have to do is treat the edges. Second, increasing moisture there increases the toughness, which as we saw is more important for, than strength for runnability anyway. Third, increasing moisture for taking the tension off the edges. Think of it as a minor mini baggy edges. In summary, we see that winter is bad for runnability of paper for three reasons. So, if you think that winter is universally bad, think again. This plot for a different defect entirely shows otherwise. Here it is the summer that is bad, and winters are totally, totally defect free. Yes, this is a different defect, a winding defect instead of a web break runnability trouble, but the takeaway point is that somehow the environment, or at least seasonality, is somehow having enormous effects on a collection of web and winding troubles. You may be faced with a new defect, and without much guidance for that specific defect from the literature. Then you might look to see if there's any seasonality with that defect over the course of a couple of years, such as we just saw in the last couple of plots. If so, we can narrow down the root cause to moisture, temperature, and yes, human factors. Manufacturing plants and factories have biorhythms, just like humans, and just like all living things, including green plants and animals. Anyone who has ever paid close attention to their plant should have noted daily, called diurnal, weekly, and yearly patterns. The yearly patterns include notable increases in waste and delay around the holidays. The effects of environmental conditions may be equally profound on fiber cores, winders, and winding. In my advanced Web 101 winding class and in Web 201.67e, we covered why you must specify fiber core moisture in the purchasing agreement for cores. In Web 201.69e, we covered how to measure core moisture. Finally, in Web 201.67e, we covered when and why and how you might need to do core conditioning for moisture management. The short answer is that moisture changes can cause additional variability in fiber core length beyond what is introduced by the core cutter itself. Also, in my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class, we show why many loose winding complaints, especially on high-modulus products such as PET film, or foil laminates is likely to be due to fiber core moisture problems in disguise. There are three starting points for a more detailed description of moisture and temperature effects. The first is a 30-year-old article that I wrote while employed in paper research that still resonates today. The laws of physics have not changed much since then, and the extensive bibliography in that article is a great starting point for scholars of the subject. The second is the must-have 
750-page web handling handbook written by myself, Tim Walker, and Dylan Jones. Last but not least is my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class that has been taken by about 5,000 people just like you. Here you will learn how to use material properties and the laws of physics to understand web and winding behavior as well as web and winding misbehavior. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Moisture Matters mini-series. Stay tuned for the next and last clip where we will discuss time dependence and measurement. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time!